Hi there guys, Jack here from Pure Create Designs and I am back with another tutorial. This one's going to be looking at creating a nice sleek web button in inside of uh, Photoshop. Uh, as you can see I've made this a download now type effect with these uh, little download arrowy type things at the side. Uh, it's quite nice and it's uh, not very hard to make and as you can see it looks quite effective. So I reckon we should go on into this and look at creating it. Okay, so go to File New. Uh, I'm going to be making my width 12, 1280 and the height 720. Okay. All right. First off, I'm just going to create that background for now. Just make this pop out a bit. Um, the only reason why I'm, you know, obviously, do whatever background you want. You're just going to be looking at creating the button, but just for this purpose, this tutorial, thought I'll uh, add a nice back, uh, background into this. Okay. So I'm going to go to my foreground color, in the color picker or the color like hashtaggy thing down the bottom here. I'm going to set this to nine three, nine four, nine three. Okay. It's quite a mid gray. Now I'm just going to uh, unlock this layer by double clicking it. Okay. With that, go to Alt and Backspace, and that's going to fill it in with my foreground color. If you uh, use Control Backspace, it'll fill it in with your background color. It's a little tip if you didn't know that. Okay. So I've got this in there now. I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to add the the shine that we see around this button, which is quite easy uh, to make it again. We're going to hit D, and that's going to reset our uh, foreground and background colors. And then if I hit X, it's just going to invert them so I have white at the top. Okay. I'm going to go to uh, the brush tool. Now, my size is set to 1000. If you're using the same size document as mine, uh, make sure you set it on a soft brush to 1000 pixels. Okay. Make sure, as I said, again, I said, make sure your foreground color is white. Drag out so you're sort of in the middle somewhere. So that looks about the middle to me. Make sure you're even on the top and bottom, like so, and then just click down. Okay, looks nice. The first thing we're going to do is drag this opacity uh, down to 40%. Okay, now I'm going to merge these layers together. Click on the top one, click on the bottom, right click, click merge layers, and then I'm going to go and add a um, some noise to this. So I'm going to go to filter. Uh, noise, add noise. Okay, I'm just going to set the amount to one percent. And if I zoom in, it's giving us this tight, like grainy effect inside of it. I like it. Um, it's up to you if you want to use it or not. And I'm just going to rename this uh, background. Okay, so now we're going to want to look at actually creating the button itself. If we go to the rectangle tool over on the side, uh, the rounded rectangle tool, sorry, and uh, set the radius to around ten pixels. I think it looks nice for this. And I'm just going to drag out a uh, button type size like so that looks okay and then what I'm going to do I'm just going to zoom in for now so we can see this a bit better okay and um, what I'm going to do with this is when I'm on the actual shape itself hit control and then go over the icon of the background like so and then these uh, little features will be enabled on the top here making sure you're on your selection tool and I'm going to click the middle for both of these this is just going to center it out in our document okay so once I've got this done, I'm first off I'm going to rename this as actual button. Okay. Now we're going to add a few of the um, blending options to this. Okay. The first one I'm going to do is add a gradient overlay. So I'm going to go to the gradient overlay. Uh, I'm going to leave this exactly as you see it here, but I'm going to drag the opacity down to 10%. So this just makes us have a nice grey to a nice white. Second up, I'm going to add a stroke with the size of six pixels. I'm going to make sure I put it in the inside. I'm going to choose the fill type to be gradient. Okay, set my angle to 90 degrees. I'm going to go into the gradient itself, and I'm going to choose this uh, type of. So if we're on the uh, black to white, so the foreground color um, to the background color. I'm going to go on the uh, black, and I'm going to go and add this in. It is E7, E7, E7. Okay, so it's quite a nice light gray. Okay, so you can't really see the actual. Uh, uh, you can't actually see the stroke at the minute, but what we're going to do is actually add a inner shadow to this now. So we're going to go to inner shadow. I'm going to set the opacity on this down to 10%. Set the distance to zero, and I'm going to set the uh, uh, choke to zero and the size to 22 pixels. Okay, so it just gives us this nice subtle effect that just sort of brings the uh, button to life, if you can say, with the shadow sort of. You can just, uh, sorry, not the shadow, the uh, 
the stroke you can sort of see it a bit better now so it looks quite nice and then also we need to add a drop shadow so back to the effects and to drop shadow um, the opacity on this to 25% set the distance to 0 the spread to 0 again and the size to around 23 pixels so it just sits off the background gives us quite a uh, so you can see it's sticking out popping out of the uh, background okay so that's the button element over so that's the basic actual button okay now I'm going to go to the text. I'm going to be using the font Toe Hammer. Uh, I'm going to set the color to white for now. You probably won't be able to see it that well, but I'm going to add out download now. As you can see, you can only just see it, but we're going to add a few things to this. Okay. The size of mine that I was using then uh, was 40, uh, 43 pixels. Um, you can just play around with it. Just make sure that you leave enough room for this bit on the side over here. Okay. So I'm going to place mine around there, that will give us enough space. Now on the download now, I'm going to first uh, go up and I'm going to um, add an inner shadow to this. Okay, so this is what's going to give it the colour. First off, I'm going to set the, um, make sure the opacity is at 75% on this one. The distance is going to be 0, choke is going to be 12, and the size is going to be nine. Okay, so it just gives us this nice grey effect, but it has a as you can see it has it goes from light grey to dark grey. It's just quite nice, uh, quite easy to do as well. Also we need to um add a little drop shadow to this as well just to make it sit off the button. So let's go to drop shadow, set the opacity to twenty five percent. Oh sorry, not not twenty five percent, ten percent. Make sure the angle is at ninety degrees and it's going to be zero zero five okay so it's just a very 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 subtle uh, drop shadow okay so that is the text and the button uh, done now last off we just need to add in this part here okay let's just drag that over just a tad there we are okay I'm just going to zoom in right for this one we are going to grab this rounded rectangle tool again and we're just going to drag out a selection over the side, holding down shift for now, we are going to need to adjust this later. Okay, if I hold shift it makes it a perfect square, as you can see, I'm trying to drag out to the side, but that's what it's going to do. Making sure that you leave quite a bit over the edge, not too much, I'm going to drag this back in, like so. So as you can see, you've got quite a big selection on the side. And then what we're going to do, right click on it, rasterize layer, we're going to come up to our rectangle marquee tool, and we're going to take off just a bit from the side. So, oh, not that much. Sorry, that was so just a tiny bit from the side. I'll zoom in to show you. So it's leaving us a little bit on the side to sort of look like it uh, wraps itself round of the uh, button itself. And I'm just going to hit delete, Control D. Make sure you go back to your selection tool, Control D, and that will deselect that. So as you can see, it sort of sits from the side. But when it's up there, it looks quite nice. I'm going to add a few things to this now. First up, we are going to add a color overlay to this. So we're going to go to effects, color overlay. Then we're going to make the color of this 4, 9, 6, F, A, 5. So it's quite a midish blue. Quite nice. Okay. Then once we've done that, we're going to add an inner shadow. Like so. The sa um, opacity we're going to set to 10% it's going to be quite subtle. Going to set it to 0, choke to 12, and the size again to 9. Okay, so it's quite a subtle effect. Add a drop shadow as well. Uh, this drop shadow is going to be 0, 5. Okay, and we're going to drag the opacity down to 50%. Okay, so it's quite a subtle drop shadow on the actual button itself okay so as you can see it just it doesn't really sit properly there so what I'm going to do is control T drag it down a little bit and then out to the side just a little bit okay I want to apply the transformation hold and shift drag it upwards okay so it's around the middle which is there making sure that we obviously leave that bit overlapping the side again okay so that's looking better we need to add a shine to this now so what I'm going to do is grab the rectangle marquee tool, I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to drag over this uh, image like so, making sure my foreground color is white again, alt and backspace, that's going to fill that in with white. Okay. Once I've done that, what I'm going to do is control T, I'm going to drag this around to the side, holding shift just so it locks on for a bit. Okay. 
And we're going to size this up so it hangs over the edges of these. Okay. So if I show you what this is, if I drag the opacity down just a tiny bit, it's touching from the bottom and to the top corner. Okay. So drag this back up to 100%. With this, uh, this I'm going to rename this Shine actually, and then this is going to be the download icon. Make sure we rename stuff so we know what it actually is. Okay. So on this actual Shine layer, we are going to hold Control and I'm going to click on the download icon, uh, as you can see here. Once I've done that, go to Select Inverse and then Delete, and that's going to delete anything out of that. As you can see, it doesn't really look that good at the minute, but if we drag this opacity, or we can just put it to 4%. As you can see now, if I zoom out, oh sorry, I just dragged that completely down, 4%, okay. As you can see, if I zoom out, we have that nice shine effect going over that now. Okay, so last up are the actual arrows for the download. Um, you might as well spend some time on this, I'm going to uh, do this quite quickly. Um, sometimes they can look a little bit off, um, but if you do it right, you'll get a nice effect. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer again, I'm going to go to the rectangle marquee tool, and I'm going to drag out... Um, a selection about that big with a bit of fatness. Okay. Go back to our selection tool, Control T. I'm going to drag, hold, shift. Um, well, I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to drag to the right. So it's three. As you can see there, I'm going to apply the transformation. So we've got it's just looking like that. Okay. Control J, which is actually going to make sure you're on this first. Control J, which is going to duplicate the layer. Control T again. And we're going to drag it around the opposite side, like so that transformation. Now I need to line these up um, so they fit perfectly together. Okay, that looks that looks about right there. Okay, just zoom out so we can have a quick look. Click off it. Uh, no, this one is needs to come down a little bit. So let's move that down. Zoom out. Okay, that's looking fine as you can see there. Okay. So once you've got these looking good, we are going to uh, can click on the top one, click on the bottom, and we're going to merge the layers together. Renaming this as the uh, big arrow, because this is the bigger one of the two. Now we need to go to effects, we need to go down to inner shadow, and we need to add an inner shadow to this of um, making sure the distance, oh sorry, the angles, make sure that's at 90. The distance is at 1, and the size is at 2. So we just have this nice in a shadow going on there, giving it a bit of depth. Okay, once we've got this done, Control J that so we can create a new one. This is going to be named Smaller Arrow. Okay, drag it up, and then we need to go to Control T again. Click on the top, hold Shift, and just drag this down, and then we're going to place it inside. So it's like that. Okay, and now let's just have a look where we're, they're sitting. That seems to be in a nice place, but we're going to uh, just use the arrow keys and just drag these over just a little bit, like so. And that is that. That is that, guys. That is the uh, tutorial finished. As you can see, it's given us a very nice effect, and you can use this in your website wherever you want. Um, so I hope you like. Please like the video, guys, and I hope you subscribe. Uh, a lot more videos on the way, and a lot of web design tutorials coming soon as well. I uh, had quite a lot of requests for that. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, guys, as I said, please give it a like, even favourite it, and uh, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe. Thanks, guys.